Well, good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today as we're looking at ministry for the advanced in age. So, <clears throat> excuse me. I want to read a quote today from the Advent devotional book that you have so generously helped put together. And I love the reading today by Terry and Kathy Anger. Listen to what they write. It says, as we read through both scriptures of Judges and Luke, it is reassuring how often God trusts in his own creation to achieve his objectives. It appears that he would rather work through us to bring about the changes needed in our nurturing and evolution. And I love that. And it kind of reminded me of a time when I was talking to an older parishioner one day when I was first starting out as a volunteer. I was a volunteer in a church ministry, and that was back like in 2004, 2005, basically 20 years ago. <laughs> and this is what the older man said. He said, you know, I've been at this for a long time. It's your turn now, Brother David. I've done my share of volunteering. And then he went on to say, it's time I pass the torch. It's time for your younger generation to step up and take the field and give us older folks a break. And being a new Christian, that sounded pretty reasonable to me. In fact, I kind of agreed with him at the time. You know, at that time, Lael and I and the youth pastor and his wife were basically the only young couples in the church that were volunteering on Wednesday night to help train up the kids in the scriptures. And so when the older guy said that, I was like, yeah, I kind of wish, you know, some other younger families would step up too, and we could have some time of fellowship in here, and that'd be fun. And then week after week, it was just the youth pastor, his wife, and Lael and I, and a handful of retirees doing this youth ministry. It was a hodgepodge group. And, uh, and, I, and we were trying to make a real difference in the lives of these young people. We had this bus ministry, and sometimes after driving this bus, I didn't get home until 9.30 at night. And uh, I was really ready for more people to step up, either to help with the bus ministry or to help with small groups or whatever the case may be. But the interesting thing is, as I went on and I got more experienced in this, what I learned was that <clears throat> some of those parents... We're working like two, maybe three jobs to make their ends meet. And that Wednesday night period of time was like the only time they had away from their kids to ever have any adult alone time. And they kind of coveted that time. And I was like, man, I, I don't want to pull them away from that time either, you know? And 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 as I talked to the kids, what I found out was most of the kids they didn't even want their parents hanging around their peer groups anyway. It was like this was their break from their parents. And I was like, wow, you know, it's actually not what you think. It's, it's exactly what it needs to be here, right? And so in our gospel reading today, uh, we see something interesting, right? Zechariah, he's older, and his wife Elizabeth. Uh, and, and it's interesting what happens here because Luke informs us that um, they're advanced in their years, and basically the translation there is they were old, right? <laughs> they were older. In fact, Elizabeth, it says in the scripture, was actually past the point in her life when she could even have kids. And what do we see happen here, right? Zechariah, the old priest, he's in the temple when suddenly an angel of the Lord visits him. And in Luke 1, 13, we read this. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall name him John. Now, we know this was going to be John the Baptist, but think about this, right? Having a child is a huge responsibility. Arguably, perhaps the greatest responsibility a couple can have. And this got me to thinking, are there any older people in our congregation maybe that have experienced this? Maybe not having a child, but in their advanced age, having a huge new responsibility put on them, right? And the fact is, we can never grow complacent or unengaged or really retire 
when it comes to God's purpose and involvement in us and through us. Yes, our roles may change in the church, uh, but we should never get to the point where we think, God's work in me is done. I have nothing more to offer in a volunteer capacity. You know, I, I've, I've done my bit. I'm passing the torch, na- torch now. Because one of the things I love about Holy Communion Church is how many people are actually involved in the ministries here. When I look around, I, it's almost like almost every person I see is involved in some ministry. And I can kind of put them, oh, they're a sacristan. Oh, they're a Eucharistic minister. Oh, they help with youth. Oh, they're in the prayer ministry. They're prayer warriors. And, and, and it just, it's mind-blowing. And I love it. And here's the thing that's really interesting. As we are unfolding this five-year plan, I see older, wiser people being put in new positions of new ministry, and it's kind of a beautiful thing to see how the Lord's using them in their advanced years, right? So think about Zechariah and Elizabeth. This wasn't just something that they could quickly handle, right? We're talking about a lifelong investment into a human being, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And when it comes to raising kids, if you've ever had kids, you don't just get to hang your hat up when you leave work, okay? Children have to be taught and loved and cared for. And that means that you have to work extra hard (laughs) for clothing, for food, for medical expenses, for rides, for college, for insurance, for medical. And and that means you just have to work extra hard, right? And, And all this Zechariah and Elizabeth were called to do by God in their advanced years. And they weren't just raising any any old child either. This this one had really to know his stuff. This was John the Baptist. So my thought on this is that the responsibility was even bigger because this was a child that the Lord was going to have, you know, to put some things upon. And so they had a lot of responsibility. And as I thought about this, I thought, man, all children are called to some vocation by God. They all deserve our best. They all deserve uh, for us to pour into them and to just nurture the Christ within them, right? That's what they all need that. And, And perhaps, you know, the reason that Zechariah and Elizabeth were called was because they weren't younger. Maybe the reason they were called to this ministry is because they were older. They were wiser. They were more mature. Um, And that more mature level of understanding and comprehension and knowledge is what they were going to need to really be effective in this ministering and the growth of this child, you know, John the Baptist. And, And that got me thinking back to how we organize youth ministry using retirees. And it's just a beautiful thing because we have the older retirees that have more experience. They've got more patience, maybe. They've got uh, more wisdom and and more knowledge to come to bear. They know what these kids need in terms of nurturing in the faith, and I, I just think that's awesome. And and you know, it's the value of the older people involved in ministry, and that I see. And I just want to say thank you. So thank you all uh, for all you do at Holy Communion Church, for all your help with the youth ministries, with cuddle care, with kids church, uh, all that stuff. Because none of it would be possible without you. And so what's my application for today? I think it's this. You're never so advanced in years that God has finished working in you and through you. So thank you for joining me today for ministry for the advanced in age. I hope you have a blessed week. 